Thank you for considering DevExpress ASP.NET controls and MVC extensions for your software development needs. In this demo, I'll show you how to get started with the DevExpress ASP.NET scheduler. First, let's start by adding a table with one row and two columns. Set the vertical alignment for the table cells to top. In the toolbox, all scheduling controls are located under the Scheduling tab. Drop an ASPX scheduler control on the left side of the table and an ASPX date navigator on the right. From the Smart tag, set the date navigator to work with the scheduler control we just dropped. And set the rows property to 3 to display 3 months instead of 1 in the date navigator. Now let's create a new SQL Server database that we can use to store the scheduler's appointments and resources data. In the Visual Studio menu, select Tools, Connect to Database. The Add Connection dialog is displayed. Click the Change button to invoke the Change Data Source dialog. In the dialog, select a Microsoft SQL Server database file option. Select a path for the database file, the App Data folder, and type a name, schedule.mdf. Click OK. The new database is created. Next, use the Server Explorer window to select the newly created database and click New Query in the context menu. This command will open a new window that enables you to execute a database query. Copy the database SQL script from the DevExpress documentation. You can find it under the ASPX scheduler Fundamentals Data Table Structure Topic. Next, paste this SQL syntax into the SQL Query window and execute the query. You'll see here that it's created our appointments table. Now, click the Smart tag of the ASPX Scheduler control and then click the Appointments Data Source combo box and select the new data source. The Data Source Configuration Wizard window is displayed. Follow the wizard to configure the data source and select the SQL Database. Next, choose the data connection, the previously created schedule.mdf database. This database was included in the project at the time it was created, and there are no other data connections in the project. Save connection information to the web.config file and select all columns in the appointments table to include in the data source. Click the Advanced button to check the box so that insert, update, and delete queries will be generated automatically. Click OK to close the dialog. And now click Next so that you can test the data source. Finally, click Finish and you're done with appointments. Now let's move on and look at our Mappings Wizard. From the Smart tag of the ASPX Scheduler Control, click the Mappings Wizard tag under the Appointments Data Source caption. Click Generate. The built-in algorithm attempts to guess which field matches a particular appointment's property. After you click Next, the wizard validates mappings and displays a diagnostic message. The second page of the wizard allows you to create mappings for custom fields, i.e. fields that are not included in a standard appointment property set. The third page of the appointment wizard addresses the synchronization of the appointment ID for the newly created or updated appointment. I'll set this property to true. Click Finish, and let's run the application in the browser. Now in a matter of minutes, we have a fully functioning and stunning scheduler. It's easy for your end users to create appointments. Select a block of time, right-click, and select New Appointment. In the Appointment dialog, type the subject, select a label, and provide any additional information for the appointment if necessary. Click OK and the appointment is set. You can easily change appointment times or duration by resizing or dragging it in the view. Create a recurring appointment. The ASPX scheduler allows you to create repetitive appointments based upon a specific pattern. For example, this appointment will repeat every two days for the next 15 occurrences. The ASPX Scheduler provides five built-in views, Day, Work Week, Week, Month, and Timeline view. This lets you easily review the scheduler appointments. We can also customize the view at runtime. For example, 
I can show the month on the time view by adding a time scale. Note that the Date Navigator automatically changes its date selection when you switch between scheduler views, and the scheduler in turn changes its view to show time intervals selected in the Date Navigator. Since I selected a week from the Date Navigator, it switched to the week view. We can also modify existing appointments easily. For example, you can edit an entire series or modify a particular occurrence only. You can restore changed occurrences in the series or delete any occurrence. Let's explore the properties of the scheduler. The Options Behavior settings lets you specify the scheduler's behavior. The Options Customization settings lets you specify the functionality currently available to end users. The Options View settings lets you specify the visibility and layout of the scheduler's visual elements. And the View settings lets you customize each of the different scheduler views. For example, let's set the default amount of days shown to 2 for the day view. Now let's take a look at the scheduler in the source view. We can customize the scheduler the same way as in the designer. Let's customize the day view. I'll set the work time. And I'll also set the show work time only property to true. Let's run the application in the browser again. Now the day view shows only the work times that we've specified. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Let's see what develops.